good spot for the Peppa Boy. Oh, my baby. I love you too. Hello my loves, Tony here from TO Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. The time is now. My timeline is filled with everything I crocheted this year, everything I knitted this year, everything I sewed this year, and I will not miss this boat. I love that introspective moment, that chance to be like, wow, we really have been through a lot and I've accomplished a lot through all of that. And that is something to be proud of. And my mantra for 2024 is to celebrate every single win. So let's celebrate all of our wins from 2023 to kick off the year. So today let's go through each of those projects. I'll tell you what I loved about them and what I'm looking forward to making in 2024. Now, if that sounds like a good time, make sure you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. And before we get into the projects, let's give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. I don't know if you can tell from my voice, but I did get the holiday ick that everybody is dealing with right now. Thankfully, I'm on the other side of it, but if you are still dealing with it, Godspeed, NyQuil, and Mint Tea are all that are getting me through right now. So today's cup of caffeine sponsor is Melody. And when donating, Melody said, I have to say, watch Watching you and listening to your voice is very soothing and makes me want to learn more. Thank you for being a bright spot in my day. Thank you so much for that kind message, Melody, and I hope this video brightens up your day as well. Now, if you like my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout out in the next one. Now, let's talk 2023 makes. The first project that I want to share is this one right here. This is the charming trio that I did in Tunisian crochet in collaboration with Crochet with Tiffany. Now, Tiffany of Crochet with Tiffany reached out to me earlier last year and was like, hey, love your work. Do you want to collab? And I just love messages like that from folks that I might not be as familiar with, but who are feeling ambitious and are like, hey, let's do something really fun and interesting together. So I immediately said yes, had no real clue what we were going to do together. But I was like, you know what? I'm in a good spot. My time is free. Let's make something really fun happen. So we decided to do a trio of kitchen accessories. So I did mine in Tunisian crochet and she did hers in traditional crochet. We did tutorial videos for all of the pieces and those are available up on YouTube. But I'm really excited about this set on its own because it really is the perfect beginner Tunisian crochet project. Not only do you get to practice a really fun stitch, you get to work with a little bit of color work, you get to make things in multiple sizes, and you get to make something that's really practical. I've kind of evolved into this space as a maker where I no longer make things that are just ornamental. I need to make stuff that I can actually use. Wearables, home decor, accessories, everything needs to be actually usable in my space. I use DK weight cotton for this set, but you could pretty much use any kind of cotton and really adjust this for whatever size that you want it to be. This brick stitch looks absolutely lovely in any two well contrasted colors. So this entire set is available for free on my blog or you can get a PDF copy and make this as your first Tunisian crochet project. Here's the next piece or pieces rather. <laughs> This is the original Tobago bag. Now, if you've been rocking with TL Yarn Crafts for a little while, you know that I do an event called Crochet Academy every year. And it's just a chance for us to learn to crochet together, build our skills, and just become stronger crocheters through that repetition and that practice. So in addition to all the learning that we do, there's also a crochet along at the end of it. And this year I had three pieces that we did for Crochet Academy back in the spring. Since it was the spring, I was like, okay, what kind of pieces are we taking on vacation? What are we taking to the beach? And one of the things that I thought was a bag. Now you're going to the beach right and you might be thinking oh I need a big giant bag but honey no it's like me and one or two of my girlfriends going to the beach all I need space for is my book and maybe a wine cooler so that's why I made the Tobago bag <laughs> that's just big enough for what you need for a day at the beach. It's created from a few different shapes that you seam together. So while this project is relatively simple, it does have this interesting construction and you also get to play around with color. So this is the original one that I took all the pretty pictures of. And then this is the one that I actually made for the video tutorial. And this is the one that I actually use more often. I kind of love that I made it with a shorter strap, even though the rest of the bag is the regular size. I also really stretch out of my comfort zone with these colors. I think they're truly beautiful together but it's not something I would normally pick for myself. So this one is also available as a free pattern with tutorial video on my blog or you can get the PDF from my shop. The next piece that I'm really excited to share is the Timber Duo. So this is a set that I made in collaboration with Ritual Dyes which is this really gorgeous yarn shop based in the Pacific Northwest that I haven't been to just yet but I really 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 want to go. I met the owner of Ritual Dyes back in 2022 at Our Maker Life when I was one of the keynote speakers. Rachel is just so effortlessly cool, so down the 
earth and just like the nicest and easiest person to talk to. Like she's got this coolness about her, but you can tell that she's really excited about what she does. And she's made this shop, at least from the online experience, that feels very curated and very well put together and very focused on the vision that she's trying to bring to her neighborhood and to her community there online. For this collaboration, I got to work with Ritual Dyes Morona yarn, which is a DK weight 100% Cormo fiber. Now Cormo is a blend of Corydale and Merino, which are two different kinds of sheep. And coming together, they just make the squishiest, most delicious, most delightful fiber you will ever put your hands on. It's got this nice toothiness, this earthiness, so it's not quite as smooth as you would get with a Merino wool, but it's got this lovely bounce and this texture and the color that it took on, oh my gosh. We ended up calling the color Timber because it reminds me of the beautiful trees and the foliage that they have out there in the Pacific Northwest. This is one of my favorite pieces of the year because it really did challenge me as a crochet designer. Rachel told me straight up, she was like, the majority of my customers are knitters. So we need to create something that's gonna entice a knitter to either try crochet or dust off their crochet skills. The thought process became, let's pick a stitch that knitters are familiar with. Let's make a project that is small enough for them to complete maybe over the course of a week or even a long weekend. And let's add a tutorial video with it to really break it down step by step so knitters and crocheters alike can feel confident in starting and finishing this project. And I have to say, if I can pat myself on the back, I accomplished that. The Timber Duo was the second most popular pattern in my shop and it came out just 10 days before the end of the year. So if that's any indication, I would say it was a hit. I absolutely love this set and you can get the pattern with both pieces either on my shop or you can get one of the very limited solstice boxes that are still available from Ritual Dyes. It includes the yarn that you need for this project, the full PDF pattern, a link to the tutorial, plus many other hand-picked goodies. Oh, here she is, the pretty girl Cadenza. Oh yes. <laughs> I love this piece so much, mostly because I like saying Cadenza, but also because is this not the most perfect three color fade that you've seen in quite a while? Four color, four color fade. I mean, there's so many colors. There's like nine different minis in this. So this is my Cadenza wrap. You've seen this pattern before, but not like this. So the original Cadenza wrap was made in collaboration with a brand that actually went out of business. So I made another sample because I wanted people to be inspired by this, to see something and be like, oh, I could make that potentially with yarn that I have or yarn that I could get. I made this piece originally during Make It Cal 2023, which is a crochet along that I do every single year where I and many other people pick their favorite TL yarn crafts patterns and just reimagine them with their own yarns and their own finesse. I get questions all the time from makers of like, what do I do with mini skeins? You're talking about mini skeins all the time. What do I do with them? I've made a video about some recommendations of different patterns to use with minis, but in all honesty, you can look at minis as just little tiny balls of larger skeins of yarn. If you can come up with ideas for full skeins, you can come up with ideas for minis. So while this cadenza wrap was originally made with 50 gram skeins, I was able to use the same exact pattern and just lay out minis instead of using those larger skeins of yarn. So I had three advents this year, two of which use mini skeins. And I've already come up with really exciting projects for those because I was able to take other things that I was planning to make already and be like, how can I reimagine this with mini skeins? And you can do that as well. Just give it a little bit of thought and then start stitching. I promise you those ideas come up like that. So speaking of Make It Cal, that is one of my annual crochet alongs and it's gonna be starting up in just a couple of weeks. I've already picked my project for it. I'm gonna be reimagining my Odyssey wrap, one of my beloved favorite projects ever, using some of the yarn that I still have left over from my 2022 temperature blanket. I would love for you to participate as well. All you have to do is pick your favorite teal yarn crafts pattern or multiple projects. And then over the course of the five week crochet along, share them with me on Instagram for a chance to win fantastic prizes from our prize sponsors. You can find full details about Make It Cow with the link down in the description. Oh my baby. Come here, girl. Here she is. Oh, I love this piece. I love this piece so much. Y'all have no idea. So this is the open book wrap, which I designed as the very first piece for the Happy Place collection. Now, Happy Place is the yarn that I created in collaboration with Hobie earlier this year. We've got granny stripe. We've got bobble stitches. We've got this really lovely and simple border. We've got this oversized triangle wrap, like literally all my favorite things wrapped up into one piece. One thing you might not know about this piece is I've been envisioning this shawl for literally years. So I like to utilize the notes app and whenever I have a really fun idea for another pattern, I'll put it into that notes app. But I always put the date next to when I came up with that idea so I know how long it's been kind of rattling around in my brain. The idea for this design I've had since 2019 and I finally found the perfect yarn to make it come to life and it happens to be 
my yarn. Even now holding this in my hands and just like feeling the squish of it and the softness of it and looking at all the colors together, like I still have those pinch me moments of like, wow, did that really just happen? I guess all of that is just to say this is a super special piece and I'm not gonna get all emotional about it right now, but y'all know where your girl is coming from because I know many of you were with me throughout that entire ride of the Happy Place launch, it completely selling out, y'all still being mad that I don't know when it's gonna be coming back. And now we get to talk about some of the pieces that were created from it. So while we're talking about it, let me give you a little bit of tea behind the next Happy Place restock. So we haven't gotten a restock of Happy Place just yet because Hobie actually has to change mills that are producing this yarn. The first mill that we were working with, it just, it just didn't work out. And now we need to recreate this yarn and we need to work through colors. Instead of one big restock, we're actually looking at two restocks. The first one is gonna be some leftover yarn coming from the first mill and that restock should actually be within the next few weeks. And then we're looking at a bigger restock that should be happening in the next few months. Make sure you're on the TL Yarn Crafts newsletter and you're also following me on all of my platforms so you can find out exactly when that yarn is coming back because I'm gonna tell you as soon as I know. In the meantime, you can get the pattern for the open book wrap completely for free as a free download from Hobie's website. I've got that link down in the description too. I got another shawl. <laughs> So this one is the Cadenza Wrap, and this was actually my first finished make of 2023. So I was working on this just after the new year when I got yarn from Nicole of Hue Loco. I actually only ended up using five colors from that collection, but it made this gigantic Tunisian crochet shawl. This is the exact kind of project that I love working on at the beginning of the year. Like, I don't know about y'all, but my brain doesn't really click on until maybe like the fifth or sixth of the year anyway, but I wanna be working on something. I don't wanna just be edging out on the couch for the whole time. What can I make that will be absolutely lovely, that's super relaxing and really chill for this time of year? And the Arvada shawl was it. So we've got this lovely color blocking going on with Tunisian Simple Stitch. And then the goal was to use every single scrap of the yarn that I had. So I used all the leftover yarn to make this really lovely twisted fringe. The twisted fringe has to be my favorite part of it. And it's probably the most controversial part of any project that I put this fringe on. Every time I use it, it's either, oh my gosh, I love it, it's perfect, or oh my gosh, that just looks ridiculous. <laughs> what I love most about this piece is that it really does show off the yarn in the most beautiful light. Nicole and I have been good friends for quite a while and she's so crazy talented. The way she puts color together truly blows my mind and I love surrounding myself with people who have mastered their craft to the degree that she has. So when she sent me this yarn, I was like, oh, I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this. Like literally from the moment I opened the box and it came out even better than I was expecting. I could really talk about this piece all day because there's something for everyone to love in a piece like this. Really relaxing stitches, lovely color, nice and simple border with this really pretty fringe on the bottom and it's flipping huge, but you can easily contour this to whatever type of size that you like to wear. So this is the Arvada shawl that you can find in my shop right now, a piece that everyone will love and enjoy. Make sure you pull some yarn from your stash for this one. I think it makes it all that much more special because you really get to honor those skeins, show off that beautiful color, use them up and make space for something else. All right, it's time to play a little dress up. Hi. <laughs> So we're starting it off with a bang, folks. This is the Mesh Me Up Raglan, or at least my version of it, that I made for the Beyonce concert that I went to in July of 2023. In the lead up to this concert, I wasn't even really thinking about it. And literally eight days out, I was like, hmm, I've got a lot of yarn in here. Maybe I will make something to wear to the concert instead of trying to buy something. I don't know what it is about me and these wild deadlines, but for some reason, it totally works. I decided to pick the Mesh Me Up Raglan by a designer called Justin the worsted and I'm so glad that I did because it's an incredibly simple pattern but it is very well written. So I've made a raglan before so this wasn't like super duper new to me but I was able to practice this gorgeous slip stitch collar and building off this collar to then create the raglan deciding how deep I wanted the raglan to be and then really playing around with these sleeves because these were not in the original pattern. I was going back and forth if I wanted to do a short sleeve, if I wanted to do a flare sleeve, if I wanted to do a flutter sleeve so I came up with something that I was like a half flutter flare sleeve. <laughs> I just wanted something that would have some movement while I was at the concert because I was gonna be like, hey Beyonce, it's me, it's Tony, do you like my sweater? 
This was also a great stash busting project because Hobie had sent me a whole bunch of their fingering weight friends cotton yarn and I was just starting to warm up to using cotton fully in projects. Now this concert was going to be outdoors in Chicago in the summertime so I was like cotton is literally the only way to go but how do we make it loud, how do we make it fun, and how do we make it comfortable? And this project ended up being that exactly. I love the way that this turned out and every time I put it on I am transported back to that moment in time when I watched Beyonce wear all of those outfits and sing some of my favorite songs and songs that I didn't even know that well. And at the end Beyonce told us to take a snapshot in our minds, remember how we're feeling, remember how inspired we feel in that moment and I have carried that with me since that time. So I will say that this sweater will always hold a very special place in my heart and I can't wait till it gets warm again so I can wear it some more. <laughs> yes, my darlings, it's time to talk about my granny pop v-neck sweater. So this was the piece that I made in the lead up to the release of Happy Place. I designed eight different patterns with my own yarn, none of which did I create just for myself. So this was the project that I was like, yes, Tony needs a little something out of Tony's yarn. I shared the experience of creating this sweater in a YouTube video. I went back and watched that video before I made this just to see if I still feel about this sweater how I did when I first made it. And I was like, yep, I 100% absolutely do. I love the color of it. I love the fit of it. I love the shape of it. These sleeves are just darling. So as much as I love this sweater, there are a few things that I want to change. If I made this over, I would bring this V up a little bit. And I also think I would make the whole thing in a slightly tighter gauge. My biggest takeaway making this sweater and kind of all of the sweaters that I've made is that it's all right to adjust things as you go. As I was making the sweater, I did a lot of like tearing out and trying on and adjusting and kind of playing around and really going off script of the pattern. But that's how I made something that I knew I would love. As a pattern writer, it might not seem right for me to say this, but you should look at written patterns as suggestions, as recipes, as opposed to like these line by line sets of instructions. You should have a little bit of fun, play around with it, just like you would play around in the kitchen. A little dash of this, a little drop of that, to really make something your own, something that you can get excited about. And I am super excited about this sweater and I can't wait to make another one. I'm either gonna make it out of Happy Place or I might dig in my stash because that is something I've committed to doing more of in 2024. You know what I could use right now? A snack. And thankfully, our friends at Treats sent a big box of snacks for me to try. Treats is a monthly subscription box where you get the best of the best snacks and candies from around the world delivered right to your doorstep. I roped my husband, who is a very picky snacker, into trying Treats from Italy. Now, we weren't too keen on the super rings. They tasted a bit like feet, but the Cubetti wafer cookies were a hit, and the Zotz candy string was a favorite in the box. If you're feeling adventurous, give Treats a try and sample snacks from countries like Mexico, Indonesia, and Korea. Each month is a delicious surprise. The folks at Treats created an exclusive coupon code for the TLYC fam. Get 15% off your first box when you enter TL Yarn Crafts at checkout. Thanks to Treats for the treats, and thanks to my hubs for being such a good sport. Now let's get back to the sweaters. I hope you wanted to see another sweater because I got one. This is the Misha sweater from Scape Just Yarns. I think I'm still saying that right, but correct me if I'm wrong. So this is the project I decided to make for Rhinebeck 2023. Now, once again, I gave myself a pretty insane deadline to get this done. And I finished this literally the day before I was packing to leave for Rhinebeck. But I'm so glad that I finished it up. And this is the coziest, loveliest thing I think I've ever made. Now, the pattern itself was a little tricky to get the hang of because as as you can see we've got this nice little wave pattern going on. Setting this up was beyond tricky because you start with kind of a flat bottom and then you create the waves in the setup rows and then from there you essentially have to count every stitch of every row as you're working it to make sure all of your waves line up. Not only did I have this looming deadline but I also had this somewhat intermediate level pattern that I really just had to focus on the entire time. I was really hoping for another project that was kind of like turn my brain off and let's get this done but that was not this piece. And I was ultimately okay with that because the final product is really, really exciting and beautiful. Now I'm gonna put myself out there that I did not swatch for this project. So it turned out quite a bit larger than I expected it to. That ended up being okay. I really love the fit of it, but it wasn't what I was going for. And now I have to remind myself, Tony, swatching is important. So you can get the fit that you want
wanted as opposed to crossing your fingers that you're gonna like how the sweater turns out. I spent a lot of time in 2023 making more wearables and I've had to unlearn some of the really bad habits that I've created by just focusing on home decor and accessories most of the time. But say la vie, we've got a happy little accident right here. And when I wore this to Rhinebeck, I absolutely loved it. It was a little brisk that weekend, so I was able to put a cute little puffy vest over it and take a whole bunch of cute pictures outside in the fall foliage. It was super adorable. And like the fall basic girl inside me was living. There's a lot you can learn from the swatch. And since I was being lazy and I was also under this unnecessary deadline, I didn't do it. But please do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> I told y'all I had a lot of sweaters this year and I wasn't playing. I was not playing. So one trend that I had no problem jumping on the bandwagon for was hexagon cardigans. Now these were all over my feet all fall long and I was like, I am making one of those. But there are a lot of issues that I have with the fit of those hexagon cardies. The main one being when you make a hexagon that's big enough for your body, it's probably gonna be way too big for your arms. Our bust measurements and our arm circumference are nowhere near each other. So we really need to be mindful of that when we're making something that has you making like a whole half of your torso at once. One thing that I really like about the hexagon cardies is since you're making half of your torso at once, you can really adjust and try things on as you go. Many times throughout the process, I would put little stitch markers in the arm and then just slip the whole thing on and see how I felt about the fit. From there, I was able to add some width to the body. I was able to add some length to the sleeves. I left myself a little bit of an opening in the back neck to make sure this sat really comfortably. And also when I put this gorgeous slip stitch collar on that it would fit into the project exactly how I wanted it to. From there, I was able to add a little bit more length to the body as well. And I finished this just in time to wear to the mall outing that my husband and I did for his birthday. I know the question that is burning in your head is, oh my gosh, girl, what yarn did you use? So I use this yarn called Cloud by Lang. It was a little bit of a splurge, but totally worth it because this is the kind of wool that just feels so stinking good on your skin. It blocks really well. It also comes in these really gorgeous colors so you don't even have to think about putting colors together because every single colorway of that cloud lang is gorgeous. So I did make another hexagon cardi and this one I love as well. I made this one all from mini skeins. Yes, lovelies. I have an entire drawer in my room full of mini skeins and I literally just put my hand in there like a claw machine, grabbed a whole bunch of minis out, started caking them up and I was like, I'm making a sweater out of this. So I held the minis double. So they were fingering weight minis, held double. That's giving you about a DK weight gauge. I used a four millimeter hook on that. So it gave me a little bit tighter stitches, but we still get that fluffiness and that plumpness from holding the yarn double. Now I haven't blocked it just yet, but that is gonna be my next chore for 2024. I don't have a tutorial for how to do these hexagon cardies just yet, but I do plan to make a little series about how to personalize this kind of project for yourself. Now that there are so many resources out there for starting and potentially finishing your cardigan, I wanna talk about how do we tailor it to fit our bodies and our vision. So you can look out for that. I do plan to make it sometime this year. I just gotta fit it in with all the other really exciting ideas that I have for 2024. You're a mean one, Mrs. Grinch. Yes, oh my gosh. So this is a really cute one that you might not have seen just yet, but this is the holiday sweater that I made for my 2023 ugly Christmas sweater party. I moved to my now forever home just a little over two years ago. And one of the things that I was so excited about when I moved into this place is hosting holiday parties. 2023 was my first chance to actually execute that. And I was like, oh yes, we're gonna go big and make this as corny and adorable as possible. So we had a white elephant gift exchange, which was a whole lot of fun. But my favorite part of the evening was the ugly sweater contest. So we invited all of the adults to wear their ugliest sweaters and the guys voted on the girls and the girls voted on the guys. This is the sweater that I made for the evening. Don't worry, I took myself out of the running because it would have been a landslide. But actually the guy and the gal that won the contest totally deserved it. They had the coolest sweaters on. The girl who won had stuff like tacked all over her. She would have won regardless. So like always, I did not give myself an adequate amount of time to make the sweater. I think I gave myself like maybe eight or nine days. So I went to one of my favorite yarn stores which is Woolly & Co and I was like I need something that is on the borderline of gorgeous and hideous. 
what you got and she was like oh mohair let's go so we found this yarn called wool addicts honor and they had this really beautiful grinch green color and i was like yes that has to be the base of all of this and then they had single skeins of this pink blue cream red and black so i grabbed those two so i went home i started looking for patterns and i couldn't find anything so i was like forget it i'm gonna take my measurements and i'm just gonna wing it now once again miss tony did not make a swatch <laughs> she just started making a chain did a couple rows of tunisian simple stitch measured it around myself and i was like huh that feels good to me so i made the back i made the two fronts and then for the sleeves i decided to stripe it because i had more of these solid colors than i thought i did and literally the night before the party i was putting kind of the front collar and also the extensions on the sleeves onto my sweater so the day of I had this cute little brown top on and I had like these red velvet leggings and it just felt so cute and festive it was such a great time and I really love that I could wear something that I made to a party I was super excited to throw now I do have to give a disclaimer for anybody who's planning to make a top out of mohair because it is all fun and games until you are pulling mohair out of your armpits at the end of the night ask me how I know so that's just something you you have to be prepared for like you're at a party it's gonna get hot and when mohair gets warm it gets a little bit wet because it's basically fur and it's gonna start sticking to things but overall I'm super excited about this and I'm just looking for more excuses to wear it so you might see this randomly pop up in a YouTube video in April I mean who knows so we're gonna bring this on home with a few of my favorite blankets from 2023 first up being the checked out blanket that I made in collaboration with Hobie for the release of happy place while the open book wrap was the first piece that I designed for Happy Place, the checked out blanket has to be my favorite piece from the collection. It combines so many things that I absolutely love, color, texture, Tunisian crochet, and my own yarn. Like, come on, it's so good. So we've got a little honeycomb stitch going on here and we have multiple different colors. And over the last couple years, I've become obsessed with this checker trend, but I've really wanted to do it in different ways. So the nice thing about Happy Place is that it's offered in solid colors and melange. So these two colors are technically the same, but this is the solid and this is a melange so it has some undyed cream cotton running through it whereas the cotton is dyed in this one so it was a really nice way to show off the versatility and the options that are available with this yarn that was super brand new to everybody I also got a chance to play around with my twisted tassels again I didn't realize until making this video how many times these twisted tassels have come up and I'm totally fine with this being like the signature adornment for TL yarn crafts but this is another one of those pieces that every time I use it every time I look at it it just transports me back to the photo shoot for happy place and it's one of those pieces that just screams teal yarn crafts I have a few signature pieces in my collection and this was an instant classic for me so if you want to make the checked out blanket you can also find this as a free pattern download on Hobie's website I've got that link down in the description so while I don't have the sample with me I absolutely had to include the rustic rainbow throw in today's roundup now that project was created in collaboration with yarn citizen which is this gorgeous yarn that was created by Jimmy Beans Wool in 2023. I used their Harmony Worsted, which is this really gorgeous wool and alpaca blend. I used one of each color in that collection in the blanket, and it really goes to show how cohesive the entire collection is. The finished blanket is throw size, but it's really perfect for like one person. So like if you're about to chill and read your book for a little while or like binge out on your favorite show, like this is the blanket for you. It's just long enough to like fit over your feet, onto your lap, get real cuddly and comfy, or you could just wrap the whole thing around your body, tuck your legs up under you, and you're good to go for a few hours. I was able to use some of the leftover yarn to create this lovely fringe around the blanket as well, and I think it just ties into the whole rustic nature of it. Now you can get the rustic rainbow throw as an individual pattern on my site, or you can get a full project kit from the Jimmy Beans website. I've got that linked down in the description. So we've got one more piece to show, and I bet you can guess what it is. It is my 2023 temperature blanket. Where you at? Where you at, girl? Where you at? Don't you be hiding from me. Here she is. Here she is in her fringy, gorgeous glory. Now, I know we just talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but you know I had to bring her back up because I'm so stinking proud. Now, if you didn't know already, a temperature blanket is when you assign a set of colors to a series of temperature ranges, and then depending on the weather outside, you will add a different color to your project each day. I've been doing temperature blankets for a very long time, and this is actually my fifth temperature blanket in the series, and probably, I say this every
every year, but this might be my favorite. So this year I did a Tunisian crochet chevron and the forward pass is one day and the return pass was another day. So that's how I was able to manage the size of this blanket because unlike previous temperature blankets, I wanted something that was more throw size as opposed to something that I could put on my bed. I also got to use yarn hand dyed by one of my favorite dyers and really, really good friends, Ashley from Sorella. I sent her a few inspiration photos and she came back with this and I have to say she flipping nailed it. These colors work so very well together and I had a 15 color palette. And if a dyer can make a 15 color palette work, you know they're doing something right. One of the biggest challenges with this blanket was managing the ends because since I was doing the forward pass and return pass in different colors, I could have up to four ends on just one row. And I didn't want to weave in any ends for the entire project, I decided to go with my signature look, which was adding twisted tassels to the end of my blanket. And I love how this turns out. They're just so stinking cute. And with them being on the sides of my blanket, as opposed to the top, I can sit under this very comfortably without the tassels like getting all up in my neck and up in my face. Now, I wanna take a moment to be super duper honest because I get a lot of questions about how you maintain your motivation for such a big project like this. Working on anything for an entire calendar year is gonna be daunting. So you're gonna have times when you just don't want to, myself included. If I'm being completely honest with you, I took almost four months off of this blanket in the summer leading up into the fall. I just was not feeling motivated to work on it. And every time I would look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, more time, more rows, more I gotta do, and it's fingering weight, and these rows take me like 10 minutes a piece. It got to about the middle of the year, and I was really thinking, is this gonna be the one temperature blanket that I don't finish? But I took some of my own advice, and I started sharing the project more. I started posting it on my socials and talking about it in my stories. And that really positive feedback, that encouragement of knowing that they're looking for the finish line of this project as well, is really what pushed me through. So if you ever have that issue, whether it's with a temperature blanket, some other big project, or even a small project, I find that reaching out to others, including other people in that process, having their hopes and their dreams about the success of the project really be on your shoulders as well, ends up being inspiration, not pressure, but inspiration to actually finish it. So I decided I'm gonna make next year's temperature blanket using my own yarn, Happy Place, and here is my palette right here. I'm excited to get started because as I'm filming this, we're in the first week of January, so I'm seeing the temperatures start to shape up, and it's already gonna be a really crazy month. Now, if you're interested in making a temperature blanket, I've got a video right here that you should watch to give you some inspiration and some ideas on how to plan your project. And I strongly recommend that you use the hashtag tempblanket 2024 on Instagram so we can encourage each other throughout the year. 2023 was a special year because I feel like I got to know myself a little bit better, not only as a designer, but also as a maker by focusing on a few more personal projects, which was really one of my big goals for 2023. I got a better feel for what my personal design style is like. And I gained a lot of satisfaction from making sweaters for myself, blankets that I really love, accessories that I can actually use. And it's really influencing the things that I want to do for 2024. So first and foremost, lots more sweaters and wearables in 2024. I really want to make myself a dress. I think I said that last year as well. I didn't get to do it in 2023, but I'll be honest, that's a project that kind of scares me. I'm still getting really comfortable with the curves and movement of my own body, and the idea of draping myself in a handmade dress is really, really scary right now. But it is a fear that I want to conquer in 2023, and I think if I find the right pattern, the right design, the right designer, I can really do it. I also want to perfect my hexagon cardi formula to really figure out like what is the ease that I like in a project like that? What is my favorite sleeve application? What weight of yarn do I really like that project in? So once I kind of firm that up a little bit, I'm gonna synthesize those notes and I'll be able to share it in a fuller tutorial. Another concept that I wanna get really comfortable with in 2023 is color work. So I do a lot of color blocking. I absolutely love stripes, but I don't do a lot of color work where we're changing colors multiple times within the same row. One of the people that I idolize in this space is Sam of Nomad Stitches. She just is so fearless in her designing and the things that she comes up with, the fit, the shape, the drape, the way that she manages color work is just so inspirational. And it's something I really wanna spend time on in 2023. And I think she's gonna be one of those people to kind of guide me through that and make it a little less scary. I wanna do some home goods, some home decor pieces, and hopefully a wearable, maybe something from Sandra's book that you should absolutely pick up. So those are my plans for 2024, but I would love to know, what are you looking
looking forward to stitching this year? Are you also making a temperature blanket? Or are you finally stitching your very first sweater? Whatever it is, let me know down in the comments. I can't wait to see what you come up with and I want to be inspired by you this year. And while you're down there, please let me know your video ideas for 2024. I'm still building my content calendar and I'd like to know what you want to see from TO Yarn Crafts here on YouTube. All right, lovelies, I'm getting too cozy under this blanket, so I'ma go. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.